This video is brought to you by the wonderful members of my Patreon. Hey Dream Chasers, it's JC, and this week we're going to talk about how to take art commissions. I get a lot of questions from artists who want to start taking commissions, but they're not really sure what to charge or where to find clients or how to handle issues that come up. And I get it. I made a ton of mistakes when I started out. I underpriced myself, I struggled to find work, I took on more than I could handle, and I had clients just straight up not pay me. But thanks to years of experience as a freelance artist and I've learned how to manage all of that a lot better. I'm actually gonna break this topic up into four separate videos because there's a lot to cover. So this first part is gonna be how to figure out pricing, where to find clients, and how to know if you're even ready to take commissions in the first place. Part two of this video series is gonna focus on professional businessy stuff, like how to write policies, how to write contracts, and why you need those things. And part three is gonna go into stuff that's relevant once you start taking commissions, like how to manage your workload or your queue and how to keep track of messages. And finally, the fourth video is gonna cover stuff like how to handle issues should they arise and how to set boundaries with, let's call them eager clients and clients with high standards. So for part one of this video, let's start with the most commonly asked questions about getting started. And a quick note, a lot of what I'm gonna cover in these videos are relevant to private commissions where you have a single person who hires you one-on-one -on -one for something that they're gonna be using for personal use. Some of it might apply to commercial projects, but that's not really gonna be the focus. And also all of this is my opinion. Granted, it's based on like 10 years of freelance experience and a lot of research. So I happen to think it's a very good opinion, but it might not all apply to you or work for you and that's okay. All right, so the number one question about getting started with commissions is how do I set my prices? It seems that a lot of people are setting their prices by looking at what other artists are doing and doing something similar. So it's like, Oh, well, this artist sells bus with no shading for $10, so I guess that's a fair price. But is it? Is it though? Is that a fair price? Is it really? Maybe for that artist it is. Maybe they're super fast at banging out quick sketches. Maybe they don't offer any changes or revisions. And maybe they live in a country where $10 goes very far. Or, and I'd be willing to bet that this is more likely the answer, maybe they're just underpricing themselves because they're not that confident. I don't know, I'm not that artist, but more importantly, neither are you. You have to set your prices in a way that works for you. It's really important to get paid a fair wage. A lot of artists starting out with commissions convince themselves, well, I'm not that good, so I can't expect to get much for my work, and they end up taking commissions for next to nothing. Or worse, exposure. Which is nothing, exposure is nothing. Let me tell you why you shouldn't do that. Number one, you're dragging down prices for everyone and you're hurting the market. If everyone's used to seeing a $5 artwork, they're gonna expect lots of $5 artwork. Let's stop collectively valuing our artwork at less than a combo meal at Wendy's, please. We deserve better. Number two, you're setting yourself up to fail. It's not possible to live off of less than minimum wage. Hell, it's not even possible to live off of minimum wage in my country, so, if you're trying to support yourself, you need to make more than that. Which brings me to my next point. Three, you're gonna burn out or injure yourself. If you're not charging enough, you're gonna have to work more than a 40 hour work week to make up for you know what you need. You're gonna end up being exhausted and in pain. You could do serious damage to your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders, and your back. It's not worth it. And finally, this reason might actually surprise you because it surprised me, but People, when they see cheap prices, they assume it's a cheap product and a lot of times they'll skip it. Raising your prices can actually attract more clients. Think about it this way. If you walked into a liquor store and you saw a bottle of wine and you thought, oh, this looks good, I'm gonna buy this. But then you saw that it was $5, you would ask yourself, what's wrong with this wine? The same thing is kind of true of art. People kind of see a price like that and they think, mm, I don't know, it doesn't really seem that valuable or, or maybe there's something off about it. Maybe this person's cheating in some way or I don't know, they just don't make that connection that this is worth something. And so they might not want it. 
you can actually get more clients and better quality clients if you raise your prices a little. So we know why it's important to get a fair wage, but how do we figure out what a fair wage is? I have a really simple formula that I use to try to figure that out. It's cost plus time plus 10%. Cost is anything I need to do the job. So if you're a traditional artist, that might be things like canvas, paper, paint. And obviously you're not gonna use a whole tube of paint on one painting. So you're gonna have to kind of estimate how much of those supplies you're using per piece and work that into your price. And that gets even trickier to calculate with digital art because you're not like using up a supply necessarily, but you still do have costs and you have to keep that in mind. Your drawing tablet, your computer, your art programs, all that stuff isn't free. So we're gonna come back to that later. Time is how much you wanna make per hour. Estimate how long the commission takes you and then take that number and multiply it by an hourly rate. Make sure that number is at least minimum wage in your area, please. And if you're not sure how long it takes you to draw something that you're gonna offer as a commission, draw it and time yourself. You really need to know before you set your prices. And as a bonus, you have a fresh portfolio piece. So let's say it takes you three hours to draw a portrait and you wanna make $15 an hour. You would calculate your time as $45. But consider that the commission isn't just the time you spend drawing. There's also time spent going back and forth with the client and communicating and you might not be able to accurately guess how long that takes. You also have to spend a lot of time marketing yourself and advertising, and that is also part of the job. And going back to when we figured out cost of supplies, that's really hard to figure out accurately. So all of this stuff adds up to being really hard to measure, and that's why I suggest adding 10%. This is gonna help you cover all the extra time spent with clients and going back and forth. It's gonna help you cover your time marketing. It's gonna help you kind of cover, you know, what you might have forgotten about in terms of your costs. And this is important because drawing is only a portion of your job as a professional artist. Whether you realize it or not, you are a business and you have to handle marketing, customer service, bookkeeping, and all of that stuff takes time and your prices need to reflect that. Now going back to digital art, for those of you who want a little bit more of an advanced way to calculate your digital art costs, here's a more detailed breakdown. The formula is hardware plus software costs per year divided by 12 months divided by the average commissions you take in a month. So for example, if you paid $1,000 for your PC and you paid $300 for a drawing tablet, and let's say each of those things lasts you five years, that's a cost of $260 a year. So that's your hardware cost. Let's say you also have an Adobe Photoshop subscription and that costs you $252 a year, roughly. So your total cost per year between hardware and software is about $512. That's about a $43 expense per month. So if you get about 10 commissions a month, you should include a $4.30 charge in all of your digital commission prices to cover that. Of course, these are all just examples. Your costs are gonna vary. So to wrap up on pricing, Please just remember that your art is valuable, your time is valuable, your skills are valuable, and you deserve to get paid for your time. You deserve to have a livable wage and exist and pay your bills based on the labor you do. So that's true whether you're working a day job or you're making art, you deserve to get paid fairly for your work. Believe it, please. My buddy Sarah Strange covers that really well in their video about commissions, and I emphatically agree with everything they say. Please check out the video. It's much shorter than this series. It's kind of a, a very quick summary on it, uh, but they make the point really well about why you should value your work. <sighs> okay, this next topic. <sighs> next, we gotta talk about portfolios. I love you guys, I really do, and I want you to succeed. And I'm struggling watching all of you charge a few dollars for your gorgeous artwork, but I'm also struggling seeing you not even get work because no one knows how talented you are. If you want people to hire you to draw something, you have to show them your drawings. <laughs> they have to know that you could draw if they wanna hire you to draw. You need a portfolio, you need something. Some of you are fine and you've got this and you have a great portfolio and you make it very easy to find. And please, by all means, go get a snack 
open up a new tab, go watch some of those Mr. Sandman cat videos on TikTok. Have you seen those? They're so cute, my God. But if you're not sure if this applies to you, settle in because we need to talk. I really try to come at any advice that I give from this place of understanding like, oh yeah, I've made that mistake, no worries, but I'm at a loss here. I, I don't understand how this happens. Some of you guys are out there making posts like, hey, commissions are open and not posting your artwork. Or you're posting like one sketch, but being like full body with shading, $50. And it's like, cool, but there's no full body. There's no shading. Like what? You need examples. You, you, need, you need an example. If you're going to try to sell someone something, they need to know what it is. Oh God, or people will show really good examples of their work, but they'll just throw in, oh, I also do emote commissions. And it's like, cool, show me, show me your emotes. Let me see them. Oh, 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 or this one, this one. DM me for examples. No, what? No, <laughs> that would be like applying for a job, but instead of sending your resume, you just put a note that says, hit me up for my work experience. Like you can't do that. <laughs> Aside from how unprepared it makes you seem, no one's gonna do it. People are incredibly lazy and they want instant gratification and you're just not gonna get anyone to do that. Like just this morning, I poured cereal and milk into a cup and drank it because I didn't feel like washing a spoon. I'm not gonna DM you to see your artwork. It's not gonna happen. So let's talk about portfolios. I'm not saying you need a portfolio website that's super professional. Like, yeah, that's helpful. But if you're just starting out, don't sweat it. Just Put your work on the internet somewhere. Make it make it easy to find. You can work up to having a portfolio website, but as long as you are online on Instagram or Tumblr or somewhere, you have a collection of your work and you're acting professional and it's your best work, that's good. You're gonna do okay. The other thing you can do is put together portfolio graphics. So if you're gonna post on Discord or Facebook or anywhere and say, hey, I'm taking commissions, Include some examples of your work, show the kind of stuff you offer. You can include prices or you can leave them off if you'd rather negotiate them on a case by case basis, but include your work and include contact information. That part is also very important. Your email address, your social media accounts so they can DM you there. However you want people to get in touch, say so, put it there, make it clear. You can also make a pinned tweet on Twitter. You can include up to four examples of your work and again, your contact information. Please don't forget that part. I see that happen all the time. Don't assume that people are going to know how to reach you. And especially on a graphic that might get shared, it might not be shared by you anymore. Someone else might share it. And so put it right on the graphic, make it easy. Please do this thing. I want you to get work. Oh, oh, Riley, what are you upset? Where's their contact information, Riley? Riley's really disappointed in you. You hear that? All right, next question. Where do I find clients? Okay, so you've priced your work, you got some examples together, and now you just need someone to hire you. It can be kind of hard to find clients, especially early on, I'm not gonna lie. So when you're starting out, I think the best place to find clients is among your friends and family. When I started out doing private commissions, I just posted some examples on Facebook and asked my friends if they were interested. And to this day, my friends have been the number one source of my commissions, especially when I'm broke. Obviously that might not work for everyone. And I understand that not everyone has friends and family who can afford art. And sometimes family can be really discouraging and act like art's not that important or it's a waste of time. Sometimes friends can be cheap and want free work or discounts. And honestly, my advice there, get new friends because they suck. To tangent a little bit, I read a tweet once and I wish I could remember who it was from, but it basically said, your friends shouldn't be asking you for discounts. Your friends should want to pay you full price and tip you because they want you to thrive. That tweet changed my life. Your friends should value you and want you to succeed and make enough money to live. They, they should be your biggest supporters. That really changed my whole perspective on that idea of friend discounts. Yeah, I, I agree with that because when I commission art, I want to make sure the artist is getting tipped and paid well. I would never ask for a discount. So why should I expect people to ask me? It made a lot of sense, especially considering most artists undervalue themselves anyway. So asking for a discount on top of that, 
just lacks understanding and empathy, I think. Anyway, another place that I've had some luck is the Hungry Artist subreddit. I've gotten a few commissions through that and everyone I worked with was really cool. You can also post your work on gig websites like Fiverr. Uh, a lot of people have this automatic response to Fiverr in like this really negative way that it undervalues artists and, and all that, but I, I think a lot of people don't realize that Fiverr actually lets you set your prices however you want. It's not all like cheap $5 gigs. It was years ago, but they stopped doing that a while ago. So there are gigs on Fiverr that start at hundreds of dollars. You can set your prices however you want. I've personally had really good experiences on Fiverr and I made some really long lasting business relationships from Fiverr gigs. Um, but I want to mention, full disclosure, I do have affiliate links in some of my videos to Fiverr. I've worked with them before. This video is not sponsored and th this is just my honest opinion. I think that any kind of gig website, there is that undercutting and competitiveness. There, there, are, there are pros and cons, uh, but I think of it as just one more place to kind of get your work in front of people who are looking for it. So, you know, all of that with a grain of salt. Another thing you can do is you can post your commissions on art communities like Facebook and Discord, but make sure you read the rules and honestly, try to get to know the community before you do that. It's good etiquette to kind of introduce yourself and participate a little bit instead of just popping in, promoting yourself and leaving. Truth be told, most people want to hire artists they know. That's why advertising to your friends and family can work. That's why you're more likely to get hired if you promote yourself in a community that you've engaged with and gotten to know people in. And it's not that they're trying to like pity you or, you know, like that you're not talented if you can only have people you know hire you. It, it's just that there are so many good artists out there and people like to buy art that they connect with. And when you have a personal relationship, even if it's kind of casual, people will connect more with your art because they know you. You know, art is a lot about connection and, you know, feeling things. And that connection only deepens when you know a little bit about the artist. It's just kind of human nature. So lastly, that's really why it's also important to be active on social media. And I'm not saying build this huge following of tens of thousands of followers, but build a tight knit community, like actively engage with your peers, be friendly, be helpful, be encouraging, leave comments, promote people, and they'll do the same for you. And if opportunities arise that you'd be a good fit for, they'll think of you first and you know, they'll let you know, Hey, someone's looking for commissions that your style would really work with. And that's how you sort of build that network. That's something I realized only kind of recently with social media is that it's really about quality over quantity. You're going to get a lot more opportunity from a close group of people, even if it's small, than you would to just tons of people who don't really care about you. Like those, those hollow follows, follow for follow, like that, that's garbage. That's not going to help you. And I'll be honest, I, I feel like this list is okay. I wish that I could give you this surefire, guaranteed, easy ways to get quick commissions, but I, damned if I know how. Like from my experience, it really is about building connections and relationships with people who want to invest in you and your success. That's how you get work. And I will say emergency commissions seem to do really well. Recently, I had to pay $900 to get my brakes on my car fixed. And I put a post that I you know, need to make some money fast. And I got most of the money in a couple of weeks. And normally I don't get that kind of work with commissions. So I was really, really grateful that people hired me and wanted to help me out. I definitely wouldn't recommend that tactic often because I think people would kind of burn out on that and not really be able to help you every time. But just keep it in mind if you are in a tight spot, then it is something that might work. So finally, the biggest question about getting started is, am I ready? A lot of new artists think that starting out, they have to charge less than minimum wage, as low as possible, because they're not good enough yet to charge more. And what I'm about to say might be kind of hard to hear, but if you can't get minimum wage for your art, you're not ready to do commissions. But hear me out. I don't think that means you shouldn't try. I think it means you should post your art at a price that's a fair wage for your time, minimum wage at least, keep practicing, keep improving, and keep trying. 
work on your style and your skills until you are getting work. When I started out, I got complaints all the time that my prices were too high, and I don't get those complaints nearly as often now, even though I've actually raised my prices. And that's because the quality of my work has improved and people see the difference. But even if you're not sure if you're good enough right now to get paid for your work, don't get discouraged. You're never gonna know until you try. And you never know what people might value in your work and the way you draw and your style and your spin on things, even if your work isn't technically perfect. So my advice is put yourself out there and try. Don't ask for less than a minimum wage and just keep improving until you start to get clients and work. You'll get there eventually. It takes time, but you got this. Uh. So that's part one of this series. Part two is gonna cover stuff like why you should have clear Riley. Part two is gonna cover stuff like why you should have clear policies in place and how to write contracts and all that kind of businessy, technical, professional stuff. And trust me, from experience, you don't wanna wing it on that stuff. Anyway, if this video is helpful to you, please subscribe and ring the bell so you get a notification when part two goes up. And please let me know if you have any questions. I will try to answer them in an upcoming video. Or if you have other tips or you disagree with anything I said, just put it all down in the comments. Anyway, until next time, chase your dreams and put together a damn portfolio. All right, peace. Shout out to Sarah Strangeart, Cass Fox, Cal McDonald, and Deus Nova 42 who did these lovely coloring pages you're seeing here. If you'd like a monthly downloadable coloring page, join me on Patreon at patreon.com slash jcchase.